Hi everyone, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff. For you today, I've trawled through all of the specs of Canon's 90D, and I just want to highlight a few of the headline positive things and big shortcomings of this camera, so that we all get to know what it's all about and whether it's worth picking up. Let's do it. Of course, everything mentioned in this video is linked below. Please have a little browse there for up-to-date prices and that kind of thing. It's the best way to support my channel. So let's start with the stills highlights. I like taking photos, but to be honest, I kind of want to get them out of the way because, you know, I'm a video guy and video for me is where it's at. So firstly, it has a new 32.5 megapixel sensor, which is a really nice change from the standard 24 megapixel sensors. These types of cameras have been given for just so long. So a nice new modern sensor and a little resolution boost equals quite a nice upgrade. The 90D shoots 10 frames per second continuous stills, which is a nice upgrade from the 7 frames per second you got with the 80D. This is actually quite a surprising increase for me because 10 frames per second makes it quite fast. It's basically no slouch. I would never need that kind of speed, of course, but it's handy for some. When it comes to body design, there are only a few upgrades with the 90D. The most obvious being the new joystick control, which is a nice addition for easier menu navigation and autofocus point selection. Apparently, the 90D sees big autofocus improvements over the 80D. The principal thing being the improved face dissection, but the headline is the addition of the better eye autofocus, which is nice to have but I'm curious to see how it'll stack up against the frankly excellent eye autofocus you get in the modern Sony cameras. Interestingly, the 90D has somehow gained a 30% increase in battery life. I'm not sure how they've done this. I assume sorcery. I'm sure this will be a really welcome thing for people upgrading to this camera, but to be honest, Canon products are rarely mentioned when it comes to the subject of poor battery life. So, well done Canon, didn't, didn't need improving, but well done anyway, really wish you'd innovate in other areas, but whatever. It has an electronic shutter that allows you to have a shutter speed of up to, or I should say down to, one sixteen thousandth of a second. So people who like taking photos in bright sunlight at f1.4 will be loving this. Anyway, now let's get to the 90D's video specs, let's do it. The 90D will shoot 4K video at 25 or 30 frames per second with no crop into the sensor, but for some bizarre reason it won't shoot 4K at 24 frames per second. Now I know for some of you this will seem like a really minor issue, after all it's only the difference of one frame per second, but if you want to shoot in front of 24 frames per second to match footage from another camera, this will cause problems, and it's so irritatingly typical of, of Canon. I hope, for 90D customers sake, they intend to add this 24 frames per second at a later date by means of a software update or something, hopefully. On a more positive note, Canon have given us slow motion 120 frames per second at full HD with no crop, which is just really nice. I really wish they could have done this with the EOS R, but alas. Bear in mind, this, in this mode you don't get any kind of autofocus, which is hardly surprising given that it's an enthusiast, prosumer type camera. But speaking of autofocus, of course you get Canon's exceptional dual pixel autofocus in video, which will be as brilliant and cinematic as ever. But the 90D makes use of Canon's new improved IAF. Of course we'll wait for testing for this to see if it's any good. IAF and video is definitely an area which Canon have got a bit of catching up to do, so... The codec Canon chose for 4K video is AVC slash H264, which is a good and appropriate codec for video in this camera. It's an inter-frame type codec, so unlike an all-eye codec which captures an image for every frame, AVC slash H264 captures one in three frames and then uses clever, clever algorithms to fill in the blanks. You're not going to be doing any kind of work for Netflix with this codec, but it's totally fine for things like YouTube. Notable video features that the 90D is missing are sensor stabilisation. It's not a big surprise, as Canon are yet to introduce this to the vast majority of their range, and it's an enthusiast camera. 
It doesn't have C-Log for video, which is a little disappointing, but hardly surprising. And lastly, it doesn't have dual card slots, SD card slots. Again, not shocking because of the target market for this camera. All in all, these are, these are very typical Canon exclusions. It's just what they do, but I can't help but feel that some of these would have been included if it was a Sony or Panasonic product. Just saying. And so my opinion so far is that Canon have released yet another good vlogging camera that covers most of the bases, but has very few bells and whistles. Vloggers, enthusiasts, people who don't use C-Log and need a B camera, this is a good choice. I'd really love to see some innovation from Canon in future though. Yeah, come on. And that's it for now. Are you buying the 90D? Are you going to use this as a mini C100B camera? Are Canon giving us enough value for the features and specs of this camera? Is the 90D competitive in today's market? Please let me know in the comments section below. And consider subscribing to my channel by hitting the blob over my shoulder and check the links below. That's the best way to support this channel. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. It carries me. Holding